Now that everyone on the Orlando Magic has gathered in Las Vegas, what are the overarching goals for the season? What is the mission statement? Well, Anthony Parker and Jeff Wiltman have been talking about it. So let's get to it. What is at stake for the Orlando Magic and who the Magic might be counting on more than you think? It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is July 12th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross Reich. I'm the expert in site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to set the mission statement for the Orlando Magic, at least in the Magic's own words, what they're hoping to accomplish this year, what kind of the goals are for the season, at least what Management is focusing on. We'll get to that coming up here. Plus the player the Magic are counting on that you might not expect. You could see it right there. I can I'll, I'll figure out how to point correctly at the at the at the monitor uh here in a minute. But before doing that, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. From the moment the 2022 season ended, Jamal Mosley set kind of the standard for what the magic wanted to be. He kind of told all of us exactly the measurement for success in 2023. And like, look, yes, win more games. It's obvious. Um, But we are, you know, this is a rebuild project that is about, hopefully, something bigger. Something that does mean a little bit more. And so it, it, it isn't just about winning more games. They could go from 22 to 23 wins, and we could say, oh, that, that's that's success because they won more games. It's, it's about something else. And so on the last day of the 2022 season, the last day of Jamal Mosley's first day, uh, first year as head coach of the Orlando Magic team, he said the goal was to level up. And look, if you've listened to the show, you know what I like to do. A coach says something. I am going to use that words again. I'm going to use those words against him. I'm going to hold the team to the standard that they set for themselves. And so all off season last year, all season, we asked, is this team leveling up as this team leveled up? What does that actually mean? And that is what we saw happen throughout the course of the year. Last year, we saw this team, take that step forward. We saw this team slowly, again, slowly, they they struggled at the beginning of the season, and we certainly questioned whether they were putting those pieces together. We saw this team come together and become a more consistent winning outfit. We exited the 2023 season seeing a future, seeing the potential that this group had, and saying yes, going from 22 to 34 wins is certainly a nice win increase. Another 12 wins would be even better. Um, But going from 22 to 34 wins was certainly a nice win increase, but we could watch the team and say, yes, they have taken some significant steps forward. Exiting the 2023 season then, there are certainly big expectations. Paolo Bancaro set them himself a during his uh, acceptance speech for the Rookie of the Year Award uh, at, at the Advent Health Training Center, he said, you know, we're all on our text chain, on our group text chain. We all want to be in the playoffs. We, as players, view this as a playoffs or bust season. And that's all well and good. That's a good standard to have, but that's not what management say. 
And 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 look, this team is very capable of making a playoff run. I'm not going to hold that. I'm not going to say no. Don't believe that. Don't hold them to that standard. Don't don't think that they're not. I'm not here saying they're not capable of doing that. But the standard that management's been giving has been very very different. Um, Jeff Feltman, I believe, said it after the season ended at his exit at exit at, at the exit interviews for for the for the team from the season. Uh, if I'm not and and certainly. Anthony Parker, the Magic's new general manager, as he started making the media rounds last week, very much said the same thing. So what is the standard? What is the goal for the Orlando Magic in the 2024 season? What is the overarching mission of the season? And it's going to sound really bad It's going to sound too obvious because it is, but it's often the simple goals. You have to, you have to be good at the simple before you get to the complex, before you get to the big picture stuff. You have to be able to do the simple things well, night in and night out to put yourself in a position to worry about the really nitty gritty things. Because once you've mastered the simple, then everything is possible. The goal, as Jeff Waltman has put it, as Anthony Parker has put it, the seeming mission statement for the season is to play better basketball. Well, no, duh, obviously. Obviously, the Magic need to play better basketball. They don't want to be a play-in team. They want to be a playoff team. They don't want to be the last team eliminated. They want to be in the field. So what does it mean, then, to play better basketball? Well, My memory is serving me correctly, uh, coming from Jeff Waltman at the end of the season during the exit interviews. Playing better basketball is exactly what it sounds like. It's taking what they did in the last three quarters of the season after that 5-20 and start and expanding it out for an entire season. Being able to play at that level for 82 games. Kind of cementing what they accomplished or what they feel they accomplished. Because, you know, again, I'm a big believer of this. You have to own the 5-20 and 20 start just as much as you have to own the 29-27 and 27 finish. Um, that Both things happen. This team is capable of being both teams. So the Magic have to be that latter team, be the team that finished the season rather than the team that started the season. Specifically, too, it means turning the ball over less. The Magic were a high turnover team last year. They were in the bottom. Uh, I don't think they were in the bottom 10 in turnover rate, but they were close. This is a team that has to take better care of the ball, value their possessions, learn how to close games out. It's simple things, but it is about maturity. It is about growing up. It is about understanding the day-to-day grind of winning, the day-to-day excellence, the, 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 the mastering the simple, perfecting the simple to just be able to compete every night. And look, the Magic Art of Stage where they are competing every night. They played, I forget, I don't know exactly where they stood, but they played some of the most close, close games of any team in the league. They lost a lot of those close games. So now it's about winning more of those games. Now it's about playing at a higher level and putting themselves in position and executing enough to win these games. Saying simply, play better basketball is overly simplistic. It doesn't have the same ring to it that leveling up did, nor does it have the same, uh, I guess, fudginess to it. The Magic could have won just 30 games and they probably could have claimed that they leveled up in some way. That's part of, you know, that's, you know, part of this game is create little slogans that you can define however you mean. If Jeff Wilman goes out there tomorrow and says, we expect to make the playoffs and they fall short, all of a sudden you lose control of the narrative. It's PR 101. Control the narrative, control the story. And look, simply asking play better basketball, yeah, that means you're free from the record constraints. And, and you know, obviously if you have a worse record, you've taken a step back. So, you know, that they're 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 fine saying that, I think. But it certainly adds to the layers that the Magic are building here. At the end of the day, too, 
Orlando is expecting improvement because they are continuing to invest in the same group. Anthony Black, Jet Howard, and Joe Ingles are the only new players on this roster. It, I think John Schumann came out with his stats of most returning minutes. The Magic are like third or fourth. like eight, Something like 80% of their minutes or high 70% of their minutes are coming back next year. A lot of their production is going to be back. This is not a new team. And so when you have that familiarity, you expect them to be better. When you have this much, much youth and young players, you expect them to put in the work to be better. And so these aren't hard goals to achieve. But this is a high stakes season for the team. And it's not just for individual players. It's for the team itself. Because as much as Orlando is talking about playing better basketball, the front office is also asking their young players to prove themselves in a major way. We'll talk about that aspect of this upcoming season and dive more specifically into one player. Again, you can see it on the list there. Uh, we'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Bird Dogs. You know, I've seen the ads for Bird Dogs. I'm sure you have too. And, and look, those some of those ads can, can get a little bit on the raunchy side. Kind of, you know, sometimes maybe even lose the focus. Well, let me tell you about Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs it, are these really innovative, these really cool pants uh, that look great and feel comfortable. These are pants that you can wear to work as khakis, but also wear, uh, wear as pants or as shorts on the golf course to the beach. Bird Dogs is known for their pants with liners, so you know you don't have to wear underwear with them. It feels like wearing a bathing suit. And frankly, I was skeptical of the idea myself, but I said, you know, I'm ordering some pants from Bird Dogs. Let me order a few without liners. They look great. They feel comfortable. Let me get a few with, and let me tell you, the pants with liners are significantly more comfortable than you could imagine. And guess what? They look nice. People don't even have to know. You know, they, they might suspect because Bird Dogs is sometimes written in very large letters on the pants, but doesn't matter. Your comfort's really all that matters. So Bird Dogs is something you should look at. It's a product that I highly recommend and certainly one that I think you should try as well. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA or enter promo code locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler in addition to some awesome looking pants. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NBA or promo code locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you check them out today, whether you're buying shorts, pants, with liners, without, Bird Dogs has something good for you. Check them out today. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. Enter promo code locked on NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. So this season is about getting better. That's again, like that that stuff's obvious. Like I'm not saying anything crazy and you know, I, I, I'm merely here to lay the stakes a little bit. We're going to repeat a lot of this stuff through the course of the offseason. As we talk about next season, as we get into next season, we'll talk about it at Media Day in October or uh, in September. Um, it, it, this is going to be kind of the theme of the year, is, is to get better, to play better basketball, to put the team in a spot where they are competing for something real, for a playoff spot, for a postseason spot, whatever the case may be. This is also very clearly, um, as, as Jeff Weltman is putting it, a season where a lot of players have something to prove. A season where a lot is on the line for a lot of players. It is a fair criticism of Jeff Weltman and the way that he has run this organization that the Magic tend to roll over their players. They tend to keep their teams intact. They don't do change very well. And we could certainly argue, I would argue in 2019, that was a mistake. I would certainly argue in the summer of 2020, that was a mistake. But here we are. The Magic have once again kind of rolled over their cap room and rolled over their flexibility. And Jeff Weltman was on a, 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 a Sirius XM NBA radio with Justin Tur Termine and, and Frank, Frank Isola and essentially admitted as much. He's like, hey, we didn't spend money this offseason. We kept our financial flexibility because we believe in the guys on the team. We believe in this young group. We didn't want to push our chips into the middle quite yet. We wanted to let things play out a little bit. But 
I think even Jeff Waltman would admit that that clock is ticking. Um, you know, as, as, as he said before the draft, um, when I asked about, you know, how much the new CBA and, 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 and teams trying to get under the second apron, I'm sorry, my hair is all over the place. Um, Seems trying to get under the second apron might act in trades around the draft. I asked him, asked him about, it and he said, "You know, the CBA comes for everybody. At some point, you have to spend money. At some point, you get caught in salary cap hell. At some point, things change for every team, and and, and the rules of the game get to you at some point. That is certainly something the Magic are thinking about as." They hit a point where they're going to have to start handing out some contracts. Some of these great rookie contracts that they have are running out. Wendell Carter's awesome contract, very team-friendly contract, is going to run out. And all these things are going to happen in bunches. The Magic have done a great job keeping themselves flexible, giving them the opportunity to do anything they want, but they know that clock is ticking. And so as the Magic start to get better, as the Magic start to compete for playoff spots and compete in the postseason, figure out how do we get from being a first-round team to a second-round team, to a conference finals, to a finals team? What do we need to do? They're going to have to figure that out this year. And honestly, I think the Magic saw enough last year to say, okay, let's really see what we have. Let's really see what we can build with and what we can grow with. Let's really see. Let's really see who works and who doesn't. And as much as this season is about playing better basketball, it's about figuring out who's going to come along for the ride. We all know it. Marco Fultz, his contract expires at the end of the year. We don't know if he's going to get an extension. We all know it. Cole Anthony becomes a restricted free agent at the end of this season. We're not sure if he's going to get an extension. We all know it. We're a year away from Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs becoming restricted free agents. You know, Wendell Carter's contract runs out at, at, at I think, the same season that Paolo Bencaro's does. The Magic have this great flexibility. They have, you know, the Jonathan Isaac contract as well. We'll get to him in a minute. The Magic have all this flexibility, but they haven't used it yet, and they're going to have to use it soon. And part of what this season is about is about getting a lot of these players to prove themselves, to show us what they can do, to show the team what they can do, and to figure out if, and to figure out how they fit into the bigger puzzle, into the bigger picture. This is part of what playing better basketball is for sure, but it's part of the natural growth of a young team. We see the log jam in the backcourt. And Orlando is going to spend a good chunk of this year sorting things out and figuring out, okay, who can play? Who can we get rid of? Who's going to be part of this thing when we reach the end? Or maybe not the end, when we reach that next stage, that next level. That is so much of what is happening in this season. That is so much of the storyline we're going to be watching this year is who steps up to the plate? Who actually looks like they will be part of the puzzle? The bigger picture, the bigger storyline, the bigger whatever. And that is a question that isn't clear yet. We have a lot of questions about a lot of players on this team. It is, I'll say this, I think this team is better today than they were at at the beginning of the offseason. But that doesn't mean they're a playoff team. They're going to have their work cut out for them. Guys are going to have to get better. They're going to need some injury luck. And a lot of guys are going to have to prove themselves in a very, very real way. And honestly, there's no better example of what's at stake than looking at Jonathan Isaac. Because the Magic appear to be counting on Jonathan Isaac, which may not be the greatest idea considering his injury history. 
but no one probably has as much to prove this season or needs to have a good season as much as Jonathan Isaac with everything else going on. We'll talk about him coming up in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends at BetterHelp. This podcast sponsored by BetterHelp. Look, we all have tough moments in our lives. We all face a lot of big questions. We all deal with emotions, and sometimes we don't deal with them in the right way. So when you're faced with these tough choices, when you're faced with the existential crisis that is humanity, Sometimes you just need someone to talk to, someone who is in your corner that can give you an unbiased perspective, but ultimately supports you and your emotional well-being. When you, whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while navigating life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. And trust me, talking through big decisions with someone with a with an unbiased ear with an ear that is totally in support of you without any other agendas that can be truly truly helpful it can just let you get those emotions out and really f- help you find clarity in the issues at hand if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA. No player. I don't want to say no player just because there's a lot on the line, but Jonathan Isaac has a lot on the line this year. Um, At the end of the day, ever since his injury on January 1st, 2020, Jonathan Isaac has played a total of 13 games in a Magic uniform, and 11 of them came last year. And those 11 came after two years rehabbing, trying to get back on the court, and ended with a hamstring injury that required a quote-unquote minor surgery. By all accounts, he is back on the court. Uh, Jeff Weltman gave a, a brief update on him to Siri, to that Sirius XM and NBA interview from, from yesterday, um, saying, you know, he is back on the court. We expect him to be healthy this season. And certainly, you know, when I did my free agency analysis, um, and, and it's part of, partly draft analysis too, I expected the Magic to really focus on bringing in bigs, power forwards and centers. I felt like they had an upgrade they needed to make at center. They opted to keep Goga Batadze and Mo Wagner, so they stuck with what they had from last year. Um, and I felt like they needed to cover themselves a little bit better at power forward so that they weren't relying on Jonathan Isaac. And that's not a knock on, on J.I. It's just the reality. Your best ability is availability, and he has not been available now for two years. At the end of the day, the Magic opted to go with Joe Ingles, who I think could play some power forward in some lineups, but obviously not the Magic style forward of sprawling arms, versatility, all that all that fun stuff. And so it does appear the Magic are set to rely on Jonathan Isaac this coming year. It does appear the Magic are going to bet on Jonathan Isaac. We can call that a good decision. We can call that a bad decision, but it is their decision. And it's going to, it's a risk. It's not what I would do. I would definitely want some cover. I would have spent a little bit of money to, to, to cover myself on that. But at the end of the day, Isaac is still a very effective player. He is, you know, at least what he showed us in the limited minutes he played last year. Five points per game, four rebounds per game. I think it was 1.7 stocks per game, steals and blocks combined. Um, had a de- the Magic had a defensive rating of 107 when he was on the floor, 102 offensive rating, but we won't talk about that. Um, he is still just as effective defensively. Those defensive instincts did not go away. His defensive ability is still at an elite level. The Magic aren't quite ready to quit Jonathan Isaac yet. And that's fair. That's fine. So now the question becomes... How much can they rely on it? Because that's ultimately what's going to happen here. 
It's the Magic are going to rely on Jonathan Isaac. They're going to rely on him for some heavy minutes and for some big minutes, whether they'll rely on him to start at some point. Who knows? They're going to carve out a little bench role for him, and he's going to have to play that role. Obviously, there are big questions. His contract isn't fully guaranteed till January, but safe to say that that'll happen. His contract next season for the 2025 season is fully non-guaranteed. And if the Magic are using this season to figure out who belongs and who doesn't before they push some chips in, before they try to take that step up to the plate, Jonathan Isaac's contract is a big chip to play. And if Jonathan Isaac does not belong, he is going to be very valuable on the trade market to, te- to apron teams, especially that are trying to get under the tax and avoid those increased penalties, especially second apron teams, because that's a contract that you can bring in for one year, cut, and you're back under that tax, back under that tax number. He's a very valuable trade chip, in my opinion. But that's still far away. Where we're at now with Jonathan Isaac is a player that still has immense potential. And everybody sees it. Everybody knows what he is capable of doing and the impact he is capable of making. What everyone doesn't know is how much you can count on him. How much you can rely on him to play. And frankly, I don't think the Magic quite know that. Yes, they have more information than we do. They're seeing him in workouts. He's been in, or- I don't think he's left Orlando until this trip to Vegas for Summer League. Um, he's been in Orlando. They're watching him in the Advent Health Training Center. Jeff Waltman said all the doctors expect him to make a full recovery if he hasn't done so already. They expect him to be able to make it through the season. And obviously injuries happen. Random stuff happens. We'll see. Again, Isaac's just kind of in a prove-it mode where he has to prove that all these injury issues that have plagued him for the last three years are completely behind him. And look, I can feel your skepticism through the screen. I share it. Three years is a long time. A lot's happened. Lots happened with this team too. So now, what do the Magic do with that? Well, so far, if you look at this roster, if just projecting into this roster, the Magic are willing to give Isaac that chance. And again, that's a lot of what this season is. It's an opportunity for a lot of players to prove themselves and figure out whether they should get another chance next year as the team hopes to level up one more time. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the public on the podcast to your podcast. Enable listening device for latest on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can, of course, follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. For my everyday crew, we want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. On tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic, we'll go over the Magic's game against the New York Knicks. As Summer League continues, we hit Game 3. Will Jet Howard and Anthony Black play, or will we be reviewing what we learned about them from Summer League? We'll get to that on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Magic. Um, if they don't play, if they do play, we'll talk about them anyway. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Phil Prosser and Mike. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.